in the first episode of the season, we get to do a, a flashback to Asmio Prison where we get to find out more of what happened to Jamie while he was incarcerated. Where we pick up is interesting to jump back to is where Jamie's just lost everything. He's lost his wife. He, he expected to die on the battlefield. He's lost his men. He's living in the shadows without Claire. And, and he really doesn't want to be there. And uh, one of the great characters that stands out is Tom Christie. That wasn't justice. Was it not? He's an adversary for Jamie, but not in a sort of physical way, which is kind of what we're used to in, in Outlander. But this one is more a power play. Jamie has this sort of natural authority with the other men. You will join me. And they look up to him. And Tom knows he doesn't have that. And Tom doesn't like that. Tom likes his own beliefs. He takes high moral ground. There's no way of getting away. <laughs> they can't get away from that. He does, and that's enjoyable to play. Cut to years later when um, Tom Christie arrives at the ridge, uh, and that really starts to set the main story of this in motion. Can I help you? Roger, bless him, he wears his heart on his sleeve, but <laughs> he just kind of immediately welcomes the Christies, doesn't he? From the very moment they meet, Claire senses that there is tension between Jamie and him, and I think it piques her curiosity more than anything else of like, well, who is this person? And... Uh, with Mr. Christie being an Ardsmuir man, I welcomed him. Of course. To settle here. He obviously gets a bit of a questioning, almost scornful look from Jamie as if, why didn't we talk about this first, Roger? But, you know, Roger just dives on in there, doesn't he? Your daughter was kind enough to offer me a bite to eat. Bree does have this moment of suspicion about Tom Christie. She can really read off Jamie that something's not quite right. The phrases are always opening their door to trouble. Young Ian is taking Alan Christie out hunting with him. I think young Ian is always just inherently curious about people. And as they're getting to know each other, he is challenged by, by Richard Brown. You're kin to the Frasers. Perhaps you should take care to dress in a more civilized fashion. Young Ian and Richard Brown have had tension in the past over the Native Americans. But then, of course, we also have by his side, Alan Christie. Well, that seems fascinating because it's Alan with the powder horn wanting a keepsake that looked exotic for him and powerful and probably thought he'd never get caught. <laughs> there he is. He's a thief. We come to arrest him. Towards the end of this episode, we see that Alan has been accused of stealing um, by the Browns. Swear to me, before God and these men, that you did not do this. And it's in front of everyone. That's a big shame upon the family. And we should set a good example to the loyal residents of Fraser's Ridge. And Jamie steps in. Take off your jacket. Which again puts Tom's nose out of joint, that Jamie has taken over again. Tom thinks this is unfair because he has a, such a firm belief in God and that Jamie seems to be getting by in the world without this. And ultimately, we have this triangle of, of sort of adversaries that is going to play out this whole season. The Browns, the Christies, and the Frasers. I think, Alan, I don't think he's ever seen his father being knocked down a peg or two. Marcy's really in a helpless place. She's quite stressed out and uh, tired and dealing with everything. She's sort of holding up the family on her own and very pregnant. There's a sense for Fergus that he wasn't there for Marcy where he should have been, and he thinks he's worthless. I'm sorry, I'm such a disappointment. What happened last season has had such repercussions. Marcy had been attacked and Fergus lost his identity. And for Claire, even though she's putting on a very brave face, she's still very traumatized by what happened. The title of episode one is called Echoes. So no matter how much you try to move forward, your past will always come back to haunt you. What is it? You look like you've seen a ghost. As with anything, when somebody doesn't deal with trauma, the more they suppress it, then the more it comes to the fore in other ways. There is a certain escapism that comes with taking ether. 
being able to knock yourself out and be completely without thought. But it becomes something that Claire starts to depend on. Nobody can really move on that easily. Thank you.